Hi guys, it's Miss Katie, and today we're gonna learn a little bit about Thanksgiving, which is coming up very, very soon. So, let's start off with learning about this funny looking item. Kind of looks like a horn, and it has pumpkins and corn and squash, and it looks like some radishes and some apples. Do you by any chance know what this is called? This is called a cornucopia. Let's learn a little bit about it. So this we? cornucopia dates back all the way to 5 BC. It is even shown in Greek mythology. So this little horn shape item, which you probably see as a centerpiece at your table during Thanksgiving or used as a decoration somewhere, went all the way back to the Greek mythology times. So it's been around for a really, really long time. So usually when you see the cornucopia, you see it filled with goodies. Sometimes it's filled with vegetables, sometimes it's with fruit, grain, cheeses, meats. It's just a symbol that a lot of people use to show abundance, that it will always be filled with food to eat. So let's see what else we have. The cornucopia, is, a, is a, from the word Latin, it's from Latin. <laughs> so you have cornu, which is horn, and you have copia, which is plenty. So it's, so if you put those together, it's horn of plenty, which is abundance. So it's always full of goodies and nutrients for us to eat. What else do we have? One legend claims that the cornucopia was a source of endless food and drink refilling itself whenever, whenever it ran out. Pretty cool. Then we have, today it serves as a symbol of abundance in the United States is most commonly found at the centerpiece, like we said. Some historians suspect the United States borrowed the idea from the Europeans, which is Europe, England, any of those countries over there. It says, where farmers celebrated by filling goat's horns with grains and fruit. So that's why you see the cornucopia around Thanksgiving, because it shows abundance. Why we're thankful. Thanksgiving, we're thankful for food, having food on our plates, having food on our tables. And it's also a cute little fall decoration. So I'm going to show you how to make a cornucopia. So the two simple ingredients that you probably have laying around your house are ice cream cones, and candy corn. And that's all you need to make your own cornucopia. So, it can be any kind of ice cream cone. You kind of want the brown ones that look like, with like the crisscross. I call them the waffle cones. They look like this. They're brown, they have like little crisscross. That's what we're looking for. You can get them at Walmart, the dollar store. So there's that. So this represents our cornucopia. So we have our cornucopia. See? Kind of similar. We'll stick it right on that box. Then you gotta fill it with goodies, with abundances. So we got our corn, but in candy form. So we got the traditional candy corn. Then we got some chocolate candy corn, and then we got some pumpkins. And you just kind of fill it. You fill it all the way to the top or till it's overflowing. Lost one. <laughs> and then there, you have your cute little fall theme of a cornucopia. And then what's fun is you get to look at it, you get to enjoy it, and then you get to eat it. <laughs> My favorite part. And what's funny is I saw that there's a turkey flavored candy corn, like turkey Thanksgiving dinner candy corn. And it has like six different color, four different color candy corns, five different color, I'm not quite sure. And they all represent a, a kind of food that you see on Thanksgiving. These are definitely not them, but they're out there. So that's how you make a cute little delicious cornucopia. So a little cute little craft and a fun activity to make with your family during Thanksgiving. So now we're gonna move on to Thanksgiving. What is Thanksgiving? How did it become? What is the difference from then 
to now. Let's begin. All right, so let's talk about Thanksgiving. I did some research and I took all my notes that I created from books that I found at the library. And they all have to do with Thanksgiving, the first Thanksgiving, the pilgrims, the Indians. And I also went on the internet and I searched safe websites that I knew had actual information. And that's kind of what a historian does. And we're gonna talk about that a little, a little later in the video, a historian. If it wasn't for historians, we wouldn't know what happened in 1621, which was when the first Thanksgiving feast happened. Historians take information and journals and letters and artifacts from that time period and they put it together and they figure out what happened. And you're gonna do that a little later in this video. So first, let's read the notes that I come up with that I found. So Thanksgiving, facts about Thanksgiving. Pilgrims didn't quite like what was going on in England. So they decided to get on a boat and sail across the ocean. 66 days at sea, they were on this little boat with a whole bunch of them. 66 days. They traveled from England to the new land, which is now the United States. So before the pilgrims got here, there was already Indians, like our Squanto, our Native Americans, our Indians. And they were called the Patuxets, was a tribe of the Wampanoago, the people of the dawn. So the, Wampa <laughs> the Wampanago was this big tribe of Indians, but they had little branches off to the side. So the Patuxis, Patu, Patuxis, I hope I'm saying that right, was a part of that tribe. And they were the people of the dawn. So these Native Americans were on this land first, but the pilgrims, Kind of knew that, but they didn't know exactly where because the United States is pretty big. So they set sail across the ocean in a boat, like we said, to the newfound land, the new land, the United States. So they set a sail on this little boat. Do you know what this boat is called? The Mayflower. So a whole bunch of pilgrims got into the Mayflower in 66 days, they traveled across the sea. Homes of the Indians were called Wetus. So you have teepees, you have, some people lived in the side, I know the, I'm pretty sure it's the Aztecs lived inside of, like on the side of mountains, which I think is really cool. So you got teepees, you got the, the buildings on the side of mountains, but these Indians lived in Wetuxes, which are kind of like domed houses that were made out of animal skin or mud and other artifacts, items that they found on the land because Indians lived off the land and they thanked the land for what they provided them. So Mayflower set sail on September 6, 1620. So it's on, on September 6th, the Pilgrims set sail. Do, 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 do. 102 men, women, children, their furniture, roosters, hens, pigs, two dogs, and nine cats set sail on this little boat. It's not a cruise ship, ladies and gentlemen. This buddy is probably, I don't quite know, but that is something we can look up. So it wasn't very big, it wasn't very spacious. So they arrived at Cape Cod on November 9th. So from September 6th, November 9th, they were on the ocean. On December 11th, my brother's birthday, 1620, they finally settled down on the harbor of, do you know where they settled down? Plymouth Rock. So that's where you get Plymouth. And you can actually go visit that place. They have it all preserved where you can walk down the streets, see how the pilgrims lived and what they did during those times. So, January 2nd, the first common house was built. 
So they built their house. They're finally settling down. They're creating their land. The Pilgrim's clothing, fun fact, were not just black and white, but also yellow, green, blue, purple, and reddish brown. Also, their hats and shoes didn't have buckles. Those were just added down the line in history, just to make it a little bit more fancy. They lived through a very harsh winter, which was pretty hard because they were just building and they arrived in November. So a lot of things are dying. They're getting ready for winter. They're going into hibernation. So they couldn't plant anything. They had to eat off of what they brought. A lot of animals that they could eat off of were probably in hibernation, going to sleep for the winter. In winter, the cold, they didn't have heaters or insulated houses like we did. So it was a little bit rough for them. So spring arrived, finally, and only 57 people remained. So when they arrived on Plymouth Rock, they only had 102 people. That was before the winter started. And then after the winter, 57 people remained. 17 were children. March 17th, started, they started planting. So finally, they're able to start planting and getting food and getting themselves back on track from the harsh winter. In April, Massasite, who was a Native American, and Squanto met Governor Carver. So he was the leader of the Pilgrims and agreed on a peace treaty that would last them more than 50 years. So in April, the Native Americans and the Pilgrims created a peace treaty, which means that they would not fight they would be friends and they would leave each other alone. And that lasted 50, over 50 years. So that's pretty impressive. Squanto stayed and taught the pilgrims how to survive in the new world. He taught them how to fish, how to grow crops and how to hunt. So if it wasn't for Squanto, they probably would be a little bit behind on their food and probably might've lost a lot of people, more people. So Squanto was a hero. The harvest of 1621, so the harvest is where they start picking and pulling all of their crops because they're ready to eat, was bountiful, which means they had a whole bunch, more than they ever thought, thanks to Squanto. So the new governor, William Bradford, asked Squanto to invite the Massasite, Massasite and a few friends to the feast. So 90 guests arrived. So 90 Native Americans came over and they celebrated their bountiful harvest. So the feast lasted three days. Our Thanksgiving feast only lasts one day. Keep that in mind for later. Feast, they feasted, they played games, they shot guns and arrows. It happened almost 400 years ago. So it's 2020. So 2020 back to 1620, 400 years ago, the pilgrims set sail to go to blah, 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 <laughs> Plymouth Rock. So 400 years ago, this happened. And then when it's 2021, it'll be 400 years since the harvest, the first Thanksgiving. Isn't that crazy? 400 years ago that happened. We weren't even thought of. We didn't even exist yet. That's crazy. Seven so in the 1700s, this is another fun fact, Benjamin Franklin wanted to make the wild turkey and not the bald eagle the national bird of the United States. So instead of the bald eagle representing the United States, it almost was a turkey. Isn't that cool? So now let's think about, let's compare and contrast and think about what we still do today in our Thanksgiving that they did back then and the difference between the first Thanksgiving, the first feast and our Thanksgiving today. All right, let's talk about Thanksgiving way back then and Thanksgiving now. So let's think about it first before we put pictures to it. What do we do now that they didn't do back then? Let's think about that. On Thanksgiving, 
Did they have a gigantic parade in New York City with gigantic balloons? Which is this picture right here. Did they do that way back then? No. Do you even know, do you know what this parade is called? That happens on Thanksgiving morning? The Macy's Day Parade. So that's kind of a today or a now kind of event. So when I put it in the then column, so way back then in the past, or would I put it into the present, the now? I would put it into the now because they didn't have parades back then. What else? How long does our Thanksgiving feast last? Does it last three days? No, it lasts one day. But the first Thanksgiving feast lasted three days. So during Thanksgiving, they did, they played, they feasted, they played games, they shot guns and arrows. So on our Thanksgiving, do we shoot guns and arrows? I mean, do we normally shoot guns and arrows? Nope, that was a past thing. We do play games though, we play football. Do you think they played football back then? I don't know. That's a good question of something that we can research more. But I'm pretty sure football wasn't quite their thing at the time. What about, what's the difference between these two pictures? There's a whole lot of people in this picture, right? This is a picture drawn of what people think the first Thanksgiving looks like. And they're all outside and they're all sitting around. And look, there's a cornucopia. I don't know if you can see it, it's right there. So this is what it looked back then. And this is now. So we all sit around a nice table with nice silverware and nice food cooked that day with our closest friends and family. So where do you think this would go? Where this would go in the now column, the present, or the Thanksgiving, the first Thanksgiving is in the past. So that would go in the then column. So let's look at this picture again. Our nice family sitting around a nice hot meal in a nice house. So would this be in the past? It would be in the present. So that would go in our now column. Also, where do you think they got their food from? Do you think they went to the grocery store and walked down the aisle and picked up a frozen turkey and canned corn or canned green beans? No, they grew and got their own turkey themselves. So they worked really, really hard because their first Thanksgiving was a celebration of all of the accomplishments that they did from that harsh winter. So they were celebrating all of the food they had and all of how thankful they were that they made it this far, thanks to Squanto. So that's why they invited the Indians, the Native Americans, to celebrate their accomplishments with them. So let's look at this bad boy. What was the ship called again? The Mayflower. Do we still do we still sail on boats like this? No, our boats are huge cruise ships that are probably like, I'm gonna say five, five of these put together, maybe more. And these are made out of wood and our cruise ships are made out of metal, right? So would this go into our now column, our present column? No, it would go in our past column. So that's some fun little facts about Thanksgiving. Now I'm gonna show you a cool website that I came across that has to do with learning and being a historian yourself. All right guys, so this is where you need to start. You're gonna go to Plymouth, Dot org. And it's going to take you to this cool website that has a whole bunch of facts and information about the pilgrims and the Indians that were located at Plymouth. 
So where we're going to go is the learning section. It's going to pull down a drop down menu and you're going to go to Plymouth Online, which will pull down another drop down menu. Then you're going to go all the way down to You Are the Historian, an online Thanksgiving interactive. And we're going to click on that because that takes us to our fun activity. Here you'll see Thanksgiving Interactive, You Are the Historian. So this website is going to teach you what a historian really does and how they learn the information that we use today about past events. So it says, award-winning activity. You take on the role of a history detective to investigate what really happened at the famous 1621 celebration. Hint, it was a lot more than just a feast. Along the way, you will read a letter written by an eyewitness to the event, learn about Wampanoago traditions of giving thanks, and visit Pilgrim Mary Allerton's home. As a final activity, you can design and print your own Thanksgiving exhibit panel. So all you gotta do is come down to the big begin your adventure. And here, it'll take you to the event. So what happened at the first Thanksgiving? The English colonists were there. The Wampanoago people were there. What really happened? How many people were there? How long did it last? Did the Wampanoago and colonial children play? What did they eat? Turkey? Cranberry sauce? Popcorn? What did they do besides eat? Football? Parades? What really happened? How do we find out? All right, so this brings you to your loading screen. So investigating the first Thanksgiving. So you are the historian. So it says, hi, my name is Dancing Hawk. I'm a Wampanago. My ancestors were at the 1621 Harvest Celebration. Are you ready to be a historian? Great, look for Sarah and me while we be giving your directions. Good luck with your investigation. Then I guess this is Sarah. She says, hi, I'm Sarah. My ancestors remember Allerton was at the 1621 Harvest Celebration too. Here are some hints to get you started. Don't know what a word means? Look it up in the glossary. Want an expert opinion? Go to visit the expert. So here it goes. It says, historians are history detectives. They use clues to try to figure out what happens in the past. Some historians think that the first Thanksgiving wasn't really a Thanksgiving. They call it the 1621 Harvest Celebration because it was more like a harvest festival. You can be a historian. On this website, you will discover clues about what really happened at the 1621 Harvest Celebration. It says, enter to begin your investigation. And that's where I leave you to investigate on your own. So you'll click that, and it'll take you back in time. And you'll click on each event, which will have cool interactive activities of learning and fun games. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed this little activity that we did today, because I sure did. And I hope you have a good day. If not, make it a great day. And have a great Thanksgiving. See you guys later. Bye.